And as I indicated just a moment ago, my first guest live in the studio, I'm delighted to say Steve Baker, Conservative Member of Parliament for Wickham. I want to start straight on, nothing to do with policy at all, but that real anger that the males picked up and everybody else has picked up upon. You famously backed Boris in the midst of the crisis, then very quickly turned against him and said, no, enough is enough, he's got to go. Do you regret that? Uh, backing him or saying he had to go? You're saying he had to go, but within uh, about a day, I think, of having made that big statement that, you know, stand by him, he's the Prime Minister, he's the leader. Oh, well, I mean, so if I can start at the beginning, I mean, I was pleased and proud to back Boris Johnson. He saved us from a major constitutional crisis. He defeated Jeremy Corbyn, which should have been easy, but we nearly failed to do it in 2017. I mean, if we'd lost that election to Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonnell, we would have wrecked this country, seen this country wrecked for generations. It would have been a disaster. So on all these fronts, taking us out of the EU, saving us from a constitutional crisis, de defeating the hard left, Boris ought to be remembered as a hero. But what happened that week where I changed yeah. my view is I really wanted to forgive him because, you know, it's cake, it's, it, it's, it's coffee, you know, these are normal things and they're not in themselves so much of a problem. And you could imagine people working together all day, falling into the trap. But I, I listened to him and I, I stood up to forgive him. And the reason I changed my mind is that when I saw him later, he wasn't really radiating repentance. And the problem is with that is what am I to say to mm. my constituents where a man says I couldn't hug my mother at my father's funeral yeah. or um, my wife of 50 years died just before her 75th wedding. Uh, 75th I birth. want to get onto the big policy issues yeah. because but we've only got about six That's the problem, minutes. I'm afraid. Now, I, that, you put that very clearly and I, I completely understand that. But you also know, because you follow your Twitter feed and you'll be hearing from people in your own constituency, yeah. they even want to write Boris Johnson in as a third option when the 22 committee have narrowed it down to two candidates. That's a uh, real I, crisis for the Conservatives. You know, I had dinner with Boris Johnson once at Jacob Rees-Mogg's house and I saw in him a really earnest love for the people of this country and their condition. Stripped of all joking and all humour, an earnest love. And people know it's there. That's why they love him, because he loves them. So I'm, I'm really saddened that it's worked out like this because I saw that moment that he was the right man. Mm. The problem is, once we got into the Christopher Pincher affair, yeah. ministers couldn't trust that they were going to be well briefed by number 10 and so they avalanched out of government. At that point, it's just over. And I know people are terribly angry and upset and bitter and I've been called all the names under the sun. But, but we've got to face the reality. If he wasn't going, he couldn't form a government and you just can't go on like that. You can't stand alone. You've got to form a government... And his government just collapsed. And that's very serious. What we need is political stability. I regret he's going. It's the right decision. We need to now try and find an optimistic way forward. What in Suella Braverman clinched it for you? Inexperienced, frankly, outside the political world, not terribly well known? Well, in terms of experience, she does, of course, run her own department. And she's the Attorney General, so she's in the Cabinet. And she advises on the law across all government departments. But for me, I've been with Suella through Helen High Water. You know, there was a moment that came where we had to decide, were we backing, were we going to be the last people uh, to stand against Theresa May's deal or would we back it? Mm. And, you know, when I wobbled under the stress and pressure, Suella didn't. I still can see in my mind's eye her sitting there, completely across all the detail, as I was, and absolutely resolute. And this country needs to be led by someone, as it has been before, someone with absolutely fierce resolve and the humility to listen to others, the authenticity, the good character and charisma, and she's got it all in spades. And I'm looking... I'm excited to back her. Has she got the power to drag your party back to what it stood for in 79 and Thatcher and genuinely lower tax, lower spending and a smaller state? Because that makes you tick. Well, I believe in freedom, but I believe in freedom because it's the best way to make the people of this country prosperous. But we're not going to be going back to 1979 or 1980 or 1990. We've got to, can only go forward. You know, Margaret Thatcher famously said no such thing as society, but what she meant was it's intangible. Well, what does that mean? Society's relationships, it's individuals and how they relate to one another. We've got to go forward with somebody who inspires in others a warmth in relationship and professionalism and responsibility, whether it's at work or at home, in the family... And so we can't go back to Thatcherism. We can only go forward with a new commitment to the values we know which endure. But can Suella, as Margaret Thatcher did, and I, I take that distinction that you're making, that we don't go back, but I, I was looking really for mantras and what people believed in yeah. in those years. Can, can Suella demonstrate the power of character and influence to look the Treasury officials in the eyes and say, no, no, we're not doing it that way. We're doing it my way. 
Absolutely she can. And I see it in her day in, day out, whenever I'm with her. But in particular, I'd point to the Northern Ireland Protocol. No one should be in any doubt whatsoever that that Northern Ireland Protocol bill is in good shape because of Suella. Everybody else is wobbling, backing away, being unsure. You know, Suella, I am absolutely certain, is the one that got that bill into the Well, let's right stick place. with my theme then. Can she also look Dublin in the eyes and Brussels in the eyes over that and getting Brexit done, which you bang on about a good deal as well, at that level, she can, you've just told me she can see off the Treasury officials. Can she see off Dublin and Brussels? Well, actually, do you know what? I've been to see the Irish Embassy recently and we need to get away from the thought of seeing them off. What we've actually got to do is get into a place where we're collaborating and we've nurtured a spirit of friendship and actually we can get out of this cul-de-sac we're in of conflict. And so what's required is a great spirit of warmth and diplomacy. And I think that Suella, by combining the fierce resolve to say to them, make no mistake, we're going to sort out the protocol, combined with the humility to say, actually, you know, we recognise we've made mistakes in the past, let's have a fresh start, a new beginning, a trusted relationship. I think by doing that, she can deliver change. But everybody across Europe listening to this or any of the other appearances, they need to know it doesn't matter who wins this leadership contest on Brexit, the direction of this country is set, the Northern Ireland Protocol needs resolving... And I want someone to do all those things who's truly enthusiastic about the direction we're going in. I don't want someone who made the wrong strategic calls in the past, who didn't really fight for where we are. Suella made the right strategic calls. She fought for where we are. She's the right person to see it through. You work, you work closely with her on Brexit uh, in your own pressure group and, and, and research group as well. Is she also with you on climate change? Would you be able to persuade her that now is not the time in the midst of a cost of living crisis to be paying green levies and extra taxes purely on that agenda. So nice when we can afford it, but frankly, not right now. Is she on side on that as well? Well, if you, if people were to look at her recent Sunday Express article, I think it was a Sunday Express article, yeah. she did express some misgivings, yeah. But we, of course she's right to, because we have to have energy security and affordability. All the viewers watching this will know what's happening to their energy bills. It's intolerable. And my opponents, our opponents, will say fuel poverty, well, they better wise up because we're going to get fuel poverty unless we get affordable energy. And I think Suella will be well aware of that. Yeah. Final point and a quick one. Charles Walker said yesterday, whoever wins, and we may not win the next general election, given what's happened in recent months and the state of the economy, can you reassure people who still support your party that you can win? I believe we can win and that we will win because we will earn the right to say we deserve to win this general election. And Suella's the best person to get us there. Good to see you. You too. And thanks for coming in. Thank you very Keep much. Keep in touch and we will talk again as this progresses. Steve Baker, I thank you very much indeed.